as we had talked about yesterday, there's been some bit of hiatus in fighting in Ukraine and looks like negotiations are moving somewhere. We'll see what happens. But meanwhile, we are shifting our attention to Pakistan because the no confidence motion against Imran Khan's government has been admitted. There's a lot of giving and taking, towing and throwing, defections and counter defections going on. So you will be watching it for the next few days. That will be the big story. Now, while that story plays out, all the expect, expected things are happening. Imran Khan, who always said that he was a principal politician, will never make a compromise. He's given up his Kohinoor, the crown jewel, which is the chief ministership of Punjab. His own chief minister there, uh, Usman Buzdar, who the scuttlebutt in Pakistan has it, and it's very well-informed scuttlebutt, that he was appointed at the behest or on the advice of Imran Khan's current wife, that is Bushra Bibi or Pinky Pirni as she is called. She is a holy person who also knows a bit of occult and black magic. She apparently told him that you appoint this guy as Chief Minister of Punjab, which is 60% of Pakistan. It's very important. It will be very good for you. Aapke liye shubh hoga, as you might say in Hindi, be auspicious for you. Also because his name begins with the same letter of Urdu alphabet as your name. So I don't know if I pronounce it right in Urdu, but something like Ain. So Imran and Usman, they begin like that. Plus it helped it helped that he also happened to be almost from her village or thereabouts. So okay. he's now been forced to resign and a new chief minister is coming in from a party called PMLQ. And we'll come to that party because that party also features as a phenomenon in the evolution of Pakistani politics. PMLQ in this case is Pakistan Muslim League Qaeda, named after qaed -e azam And the chief minister is going to be Parvez Ilahi, who's had many such jobs in the past. He's, there, there are some of these people who are always coming in. It's like a constant T20 innings that goes on. These batsmen come, hit a couple, go away, and then there's always another match in the league. So he's one of those characters. Now, as we talk about this, how do we understand Pakistan's basic politics? Where has Imran come from? Where has the power of General Bajwa come from? Is it the power of General Bajwa or something else? What is it in Pakistan politics that makes it so interesting, makes its history so checkered and so fascinating? Now, you might have heard that line. It's been anecdotally at least attributed to late Habib Jalib. Na mera Pakistan hai, na tera Pakistan hai, ye uska Pakistan hai, jo sadre Pakistan hai. Which, which, which means it's neither my Pakistan nor your Pakistan. This Pakistan belongs to whoever is president of Pakistan. Now, does that apply? Then I can give, I, I can give you the entire list of presidents of Pakistan. So Pakistan has had four governors general and 17 presidents, right, until now. But you will find that not all of them had any power. Similarly, Pakistan has had 28 prime ministers, depending on whether you count all the caretaker ones in the middle or not, because some of those only came in and went out in no time. Now, if you see 27, 28 prime ministers, you also have to take into account the fact that for 24 years since independence, Pakistan has had no prime minister. That's when mostly when dictate, military dictators were in power. So there was no prime minister. So say in about 50 years since Pakistan became independent, Pakistan has had nearly 27 to 28 prime ministers, depending on how you are counting. And yet you tell me which prime minister has had real power. I would say the only prime minister in Pakistan's history who had real power was Zulfikar Ali Bhutto between say 1970 to 1977 until Ziaul Haq, who he had appointed superseding others as his chief, put him in jail and later hanged him. So what is Sadre Pakistan means? Who is the chief executive of Pakistan? Now that is a tricky thing. When Pakistan came into being, it was a bit easy because Jinnah himself, Muhammad Ali Jinnah was the governor general of Pakistan. The power was, was with the Governor General. So he took over as Governor General. His Prime Minister was Liaquat Ali Khan, who was actually an Urdu speaker or what in Pakistan would be called a Muhajir, a refugee from India, from an aristocratic family 
in Uttar Pradesh with great connections everywhere. So he became prime minister. Initially, the prime minister had some powers, but in the course of time, these powers were taken away. A new constitution came in and between 1951 and 57, governors general of Pakistan dismissed how many prime ministers? Six prime ministers. So in seven years, six prime ministers were dismissed and I will give you their names and some idea of their tenures also and some of these will run on my screen. So you can see that from the very beginning in Pakistan, there were doubts about who has the real power. So prime minister, you said my prime minister is the chief executive, but the power lay somewhere else. Now if you look at Pakistan's prime ministers in that period, Liaquat Ali Khan, four years and 63 days, the longest serving. Now what happened with him is worth remembering. In January of 1951, he decided to appoint a Pakistani army chief. You know, after partition, India and Pakistan had both inherited British army chiefs. So Pakistan had General Gracie. There was a lot of resentment in Pakistani army that they needed a Pakistani chief. So Liaquat Ali Khan went around looking for a really bright character. And who did he find? He found a 44-year-old. A 44-year-old was appointed chief of Pakistan's army in January 1951. That 44-year-old had a distinguished military history. He was even, even suspended without pay as a punishment in the Burma campaign for cowardice, for displaying cowardice under fire as the commanding officer of a battalion under the British. This was General Ayub Khan. At 44, he became the chief of army staff. That is when I would say the foundation of the future politics of Pakistan was laid. January, he was made the chief, superseding many others. Among those superseded was a distinguished general called Major General Akbar Khan. Akbar Khan was also a celebrated general because he, under a code name, under an assumed name or a nom, or a nom de guerre, had led the 1947-48 Pakistani military effort in Kashmir. So to that extent, he was hailed as somebody who fought for the country as soon as the country came into being, but he wasn't made the chief. He was also known to be of a leftist bent, therefore closer to the Soviet Union. So in March of 1951, he led a coup against Liaquat Ali Khan government. That coup failed. It is the only military coup in Pakistan's history that failed. The first one failed and you know why? Possibly because it was the only coup in Pakistan's history that's been led by leftists. So Akbar Khan's accomplices included, for example, Faiz Ahmad Faiz. And later there was a military trial and they were all given long jail sentences as was Faiz. And just a sidelight, their lawyer was Hussein Shaheed Sorawardi, who later became the chief executive of Pakistan and one of the things that he could achieve in his short tenure there before he got fired also, one of the things he, he could achieve or do was to remit the sentences of these people which are, which are his former clients including Faiz Ahmad Faiz. So that is where this complex history started. Later that year, Liaquat Ali Khan got assassinated. So did not complete his five years, he got assassinated by some Pathan of the Zadran tribe. Nobody figured out what the reason was, who had sent him. So he assassinated Liaquat Ali Khan at a public meeting. Police shot him at the public meeting. Khatam Kahani. End of story. Nobody figured out. So that is when also the, the history of mysterious political assassinations in Pakistan started. Now, after Liaquat Ali Khan, there was Khwaza Nazimuddin. He was a Bengali. Uh, he, he was from East Bengal. One year, 18 days. Muhammad Ali Bogra, also from East Bengal. Two years, two years and some hundred days. Then came Hussein Shahid Sorawardi, 56 to 57, one year and 35 days. That's when I told you, he remitted the sentences of Faiz Ahmad Faiz and others, who he had represented as a lawyer earlier. And then came Ibrahim Ismail Chundrigar for 59 days and Malik Feroz Khan Noon for 295 days. Then Nurul Amin for just 13 days, but that's much later. I will come to that. That happens in 1971. Now, these are the seven prime ministers that got dismissed by governor general, six by governor generals, one by president in those seven years. So prime minister's job in Pakistan was always skating on thin ice. Now in this period, 
you would imagine the power power was more with governor generals and presidents that also is a very interesting cast of characters so if you want to understand pakistan's politics today you have to understand the politics of the 50s because that is when this foundation was laid and remember if you read so much of the declassified documents of the us state department even when ayub was a brigade commander <clears throat> there are notes written by the american consul general in lahore saying that we have identified in this brigadier young brigadier ayub khan a potential leader for pakistan who will be very friendly with us and ayub then also laid the foundations of the pro american pro western western aligned american aligned foreign and military policy for pakistan now look at the cast of characters as governor generals first of all jinnah himself but jinnah was not well so he lasted only one year 28 days he passed away he had a serious lung issue then came khwaza najimuddin 3 years and 22 days bengali then came a very interesting name malik gulam mohammad who lasted 3 years and 29 days again an aristocrat very well educated educated i think in uh, in one of the british universities very well connected very wealthy and you know what next time you see a car which is made by mahindras or mahindra and mahindra remember that until independence until the partition mahindra and mahindra was mohammad and mahindra and the mohammad in that mohammad and mahindra was malik gulam mohammad so after the partition this became mahindra and mahindra his businesses remained in pakistan and he became the third governor general of pakistan fourth major general iskandar mirza who later also became president now he is a very interesting character again we should not judge anybody because of their ancestry but major general iskandar mirza again part of the aristocracy a former bureaucrat civil servant celebrated by the british he was a great grandson of mir jafar of nawab mir jafar of bengal you remember the famous or infamous man from the battle of plassey and sirajuddaulah who's who's seen as somebody who betrayed sirajuddaulah to uh, robert clive at that point but as we said we don't judge any any generation uh, based on their ancestors but i'm just mentioning it to you as a factoid that he was a great grandson of mir jafar after him the next tamasha started so in 51 ayub became the army chief but he wasn't happy just being the army chief and the americans helping him he had the americans helping him so he became defense minister he became he got other ministries and he also became prime minister while he is also the army chief right uh, so until 58 for 7 years he remains the army chief and then something happens in that year iskandar mirza who is then the president of pakistan he imposes martial law he imposes martial law just after 2 weeks of a prime minister having been there so this was a prime minister called nurul amin you have to search for him even if you go to google you might find under under wiki maybe a couple of lines only on him he was a prime minister for 13 days and then the president got impatient with him imposed martial law and who will be the chief martial law administrator my favorite defense minister prime minister etc that is ayub himself and what does the general do when he becomes chief martial law administrator he is appointed chief martial law administrator by his president within 2 weeks he fires the president and he becomes the president so that is how ayub khan became the president of pakistan in 1958 and lasted till 1969 so that is when we come to the other major fact about pakistan the only people no elected prime minister in pakistan has served 5 full years no elected president with any power has spent 5 years the only president who had who was not a military president but had real power again was bhutto for just over a year after 1971 after pakistan lost the war and yaya khan was thrown out but the only rulers who have commanded power for a period of more than 5 years in pakistan's history are the generals so if you look at the generals in pakistan four generals have directly ruled pakistan ayub khan 1958 to 69 10 years and 4 months yaya khan after him uh, Two years and eight months. After that came Zia for about nine years. In fact, a little more than nine years. Although during some of that period he was not technically the chief executive, 
he held a party less election where mohammad khan junejo became prime minister now presidents in pakistan the generals have tried to innovate with democracy so ayub khan because everybody figures that in the course of time my position will become untenable i have to i have to go to the white house i have to go and go and paint myself as some kind of a leader of a large country so they try to hold some kind of an election and bring in so first thing is to hold a referendum where all these dictators whether it was ayub or zia or musharraf they get 90% plus votes i wonder what happens to the rest who don't vote for them so and then they come up with some innovation and democracy so ayub's idea was guided democracy that i'll have a democracy but i'll guide it from outside right but when it comes to elections i will either get 97% or 98% or i will rig it so 1967 he fought a presidential election against him was none else than fatima jinnah the sister of mohammad ali jinnah who is called madre millat you know uh, mother of the nation and she was qaid azam's constant companion she was defeated although she won the popular vote so they rigged that election and they said oh she has won the popular vote but electoral college ayub's won in any case uh, first second third fourth all umpires are ours drs is ours etc etc all kinds of mad allegations were made against her it's only later that she has been fully rehabilitated rehabilitated and reinstated in pakistan's history and given her place of honor which is a duly deserved place but ayub was even a dictator was even willing to push her around jinnah's own sister and jinnah's closest companion so almost 11 years ayub ruled pakistan two and a half years yaya khan he only went out because he lost that war in 71 after that came zia nine years and then came musharraf for more than 7 years so if you add up the tenure of all these i told you for 24 years pakistan did not have a prime minister but if you look at the tenure of this formal military dictators that adds up to 30 years so for 30 years pakistan has had a military dictator three of these have served for more than 5 years one for 10 years plus one for nearly 10 years that is 9 years and 11 months ziaul haq and third musharraf for nearly 8 years so the only durable chief executives in pakistan have been the military dictators that's why when the poet when the shayar said na tera pakistan hai na mera pakistan hai ye uska pakistan hai jo sadr e pakistan hai what he meant was he was reflecting on that period of the 60s and the 70s when the sadr the president was an all powerful military dictator now that hasn't been happening lately as we know so see the twists and turns that this that the country goes through when zia realizes that he needs americans are putting pressure he wants to be less of a bad guy i don't think he was trying to be a nice guy he wanted to be less of a bad guy so he thought let me hold an election so first he said democracy is a, is a great thing election is a great thing but it's like exercise is a great thing for everybody but when somebody is really sick and needs treatment on a hospital bed do you tell him to go exercise that is the state of pakistan democracy is good for pakistan but pakistan is a patient a sick pa- sick patient i can't tell a sick patient to go out and start exercising then as pressure went up particularly from the us he decided just as ayub had guided democracy now zia thought he left party less democracy so he held a party less election can you imagine a party party less election what does that mean i mean can you have can you have an alcohol free whiskey i mean if you have one and you love to drink whiskey go ahead and drink it right uh, when you get really high give me a call you will be all right right uh, so he said i will have a party less election in that party party less election a man called mohammad khan junejo got elected even with that zia got scared isko power mil gaya to mera kya hoga so zia in fact amended the constitution the 1973 constitution that was called the eighth amendment that amendment gave the president power to hire and fire basically he could fire the prime minister at any point of time so there is a little little story and it's not apocryphal it's a true story in 1987 during the during the tensions over operation brass tacks to ease the tensions ziaul haq came to india to watch the cricket test match in jaipur which indian and pakistani teams were playing that is when he also called on gyanizel singh 
who was president of india and as they met two fellow punjabis zia told gyani zail singh gyani ji hun te mai vi thodi tarah president ha koi power nahi power sari prime minister di that now that gyani ji i am a titular president just like you i have no powers just like you, your country powers are all with the prime minister so Z- gyani zail singh was very sharp and he wasn't about to let go of a full toss or a half volley like that he was going to hit it for a six so gyani zail singh put his arm round zia and said zia sahab ek farak hai there is one difference zia sahab what is that he said meri naukri to sirf 5 saal ki hai i know that in 5 years i have to go aapka kya hai jab tak marzi raho <laughs> you can carry on for as long as you wish and zia did carry on for as long as he wished or god wished because you know something put him away in that air crash in bahawalpur so he was insecure even about this bonsai prime minister so he passed this amendment to give himself the power the president the power to sack him then he died after he died a more proper election took place where parties contested not party less that's when benazir became prime minister but once again the establishment wasn't going to like it so gulam isa khan who became the president after zia used the eighth amendment to sack benazir then he used the same power to sack nawaz sharif and again used the same power to sack benazir so in less than 5 years gulam isa khan also didn't complete his 5 years as president in less than 5 years gulam isa khan sacked three elected prime ministers using the power of the 8th amendment next time an election took place and nawaz sharif came back he had two thirds majority so he said now i am going to fix this system he said to me in an interview on a train which he was riding from islamabad to lahore like a like a protest train ride where he was gathering crowds everywhere and he said that this system is adha tetar adha bater half a partridge half a quail i'm going to change it so he got his majority and he came and he amended the constitution to take away the eighth amendment which means to take away the power of the president to sack his prime ministers so the amendments he brought about these were 13th and the 14th amendments these set aside the 8th amendment so president no longer had the power to fire him it again became a parliamentary democracy where the prime minister had the power that the that earlier resided in the president of course we know that the real power in pakistan all this while continued to reside reside in the army because no prime minister was lasting long enough and one reason no prime minister has lasted long enough is that the army does not want anybody to get so powerful that they start questioning them or challenging them or they start not signing on the dotted line he amended this but once again we know what happened to him despite his big majority in 1999 musharraf staged a coup and threw him out threw him in jail and then later sent him into exile and musharraf first anointed himself chief executive of pakistan then when he was coming to india for the agra peace talks he thought chief executive baat nahi banegi protocol kya hoga right at least fauji's generals no protocol so then he named himself president of pakistan fantastic uh, and after that he also held a sham election he also held some kind of election which was a cross between guided democracy of ayub and partyless democracy of ziaul haq so in this election he floated a party of his own indirectly so basically they broke up nawaz sharif's party pmln as it was then called pakistan muslim league nawaz and created pmlq that's pml qaid pakistan muslim league qaid and it, it was then called the king's party because it was the musharraf was the king and he had floated a party so i told you when i was talking about zafar elahi that i'll come back to pmlq so that is the story so pmlq was founded also by in a way consecrated by a military dictator to bring in some kind of a sham democracy now in that election in 2004 they again brought in a prime minister and that prime minister was a man whose name i am sure if i mention to you you will you might reach for google but you will not remember because he hardly registered he was zafrullah jamali now this was a government with pmlq plus a faction of mohajir qaumi mahas basically mar peet ke they had set up this coalition the king's coalition even then the dictator got insecure that eighth amendment power had gone he didn't want a prime minister who may tomorrow start thinking that he can defy the president so he once again had the constitution amended so now they came up in 
with the 17th amended amendment of pakistani constitution which partly restored the president's powers under the 8th amendment the new amendment said that the president can dismiss an elected prime minister at his whim subject to the endorsement by the supreme court of pakistan and then you know what happens to judges and judiciaries in these situations when there is a there is an all powerful dictator after all bhutto was hanged for a crime for which normally in a in a usual court of law he would have got away quite easily so 70th amendment restored these powers once again after that 2007 when musharraf fell he became unpopular there was a big movement against him he left power and this time pakistan people's party came in and nawaz sharif's party helped them they reamended the constitution and now brought in the 8th amendment again taking away the power of the president to sack the prime minister now while this was happening army was quietly watching this because army wants to deal army does not like the mess of politics in fact musharraf when he spoke with some of us over that in famous breakfast in uh, agra how come when mr vajpay came to lahore you don't didn't go to receive him in a public place he said ye political log aate hain to maine bhi apne prime minister ko bola hai aap political log hote ho bahut dhool mitti hoti hai bahut mess hoti hai to wahan main kyon jaau baad mein milunga that you know when politicians meet there is a lot of mess there is there is something to that army generals like linear systems so at some point of time they figured that in this time and age it's impossible or it's very difficult for for an army general to take take power formally and carry on because the world will not accept it so maybe let this tamasha go on underneath under the surface or under the radar whereas we have a linear way linear control over the power structure and that what that is what has happened now now what's happened very oddly and very surprisingly is that imran khan who is a child of this same linear structure because they held the last election after disqualifying all the key rivals likely key rivals against him they loaded the battlefield in his favor imran's favor even then when he did not have majority they helped him cobble up a majority in the state of punjab he did not have a majority they got all the other parties including the usual suspect pmlq to make an and nationally also mqm factions to help him form a government with a majority it is just that in his third year he also began to challenge that general's authority and once again he did some made the same mistake that many others have made before him remember ayub khan was made the chief above the heads of many others right and what did he do he destroyed pakistan's democracy for all for two decades by himself starting with 51 ending in 1967 and took over power similarly bhutto promoted zia over the heads of many others thinking that he'll be compliant but he wasn't he hanged bhutto once again nawaz sharif had already sacked one chief that is general jahangir karamat who had the reputation of being a very professional general and frankly i did meet him we were part of we were members of some track two groups which included former indian chiefs and former pakistani chiefs and foreign secretaries from both sides he was fired by nawaz sharif and in the process while he continued fighting his generals he fought with another professional general asif nawaz janjua who died in harness uh, he appointed musharraf again superseding others hoping that he'll be compliant plus maybe hoping that he's a muhajir so he will not be such a threat and yet musharraf threw him out Imran made a similar mistake when he gave General Bajwa an extension of three years. He thought that now this guy will be beholden to me, but it doesn't work like that. So the lesson here is that in a system like Pakistan, it doesn't matter who the chief is. We waste too much time saying this chief is like this, this chief is like that. A chief in Pakistani army is like bus number seventy-seven. One goes, another one comes. That also says seventy-seven in the sense that the power over or the or this divine right over pakistani power that is held by the institution called pakistan army so who the chief is doesn't matter so no matter who gets elected and who gets thrown out and anybody who asks too many questions will get thrown out the pakistani army also has been quite respectful of pakistan's <laughs> diversity here sure enough no bengali has become the chief of army staff in pakistan and no bengali has become a dictator but of the four military dictators 
two are Punjabis, that is Yahya Khan and Ziaul Haq. One a Pathan, that is Muhammad Ayub Khan, who became field marshal later, and one a Muhajir, that is Musharraf. So one Muhaj Muhajir, one Pathan, and two Punjabis. So the sum of all this is today's supremely ironic situation, whereby Imran Khan, who is a child of the same army establishment, who has been installed there, who has been called quite rightly the selected prime minister, not the elected prime minister, he is now gone rogue on, from their point of view. And he is challenging the same army establishment. Now, you like Imran Khan, you don't like Imran Khan. You like democracy, you don't like democracy. So the irony is that if you like democracy and if you think elected government should survive and military should not be able to throw them out, you might think that Imran Khan should win because he's fighting a good battle. He's fighting a battle to protect a democratically elected government against interference from the big bosses of the general headquarters. But there is one little rider there. Is Imran Khan a legitimately elected government? As long as a large number of people believe, and quite rightly, that he did not get a majority of his own, that his is a selected government, he was installed there by the, by the, by the army, the same army can take him down as well.